Hey guys, welcome back to Clockwork Dandy Needles. We have another breakdown for you. Seventh episode of the Requiem for the Rose King. This breakdown tends to just more be, we take it at a slow pace, we break it down, we try to explain what's going on because I do know this is a very confusing anime. With an anime like this, they have technically got 24 episodes. Things get crushed down and we're already dealing with Shakespeare. Things are confusing as they are. We are here today to make sure we break it down, work out what's going on, because th this is a very interesting episode when there's a lot of people shifting sides, there's a lot of players on the field. We need to go through it, explain it to you guys, give you some history knowledge, sprinkle in some interesting nuggets and make it better for you. Before we get going, make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel. That really helps me. Just even a single like and a subscribe, that does an amazing thing for me. It helps boost the channel. If you don't even get to the end of the video, just giving the channel a subscribe is more than enough for me. And I really am thankful for all of it. There is a Discord channel too. This allows you to have a notification straight to your phone whenever videos go up. We have my Midway review coming your way very shortly. In this video, I am going to tell you my top three OPs, EDs, and my current standing for top three anime. It is a little bit late, but my life is in a very messy place right now. So you're going to have to bear with the turmoil that is going on. But I am trying to stick to my main release schedule as much as possible. Hopefully that's going to help you guys. And hopefully you guys can forgive me. But let's go on with the video. This is episode seven of the Requiem of the Rose King. First things first, if anyone is wondering why Edward is still alive, why Warwick hasn't just disposed of Edward in the first place, Warwick actually needs to crown George properly. It has to be done legitimately. There is a way of crowning a monarch. If George suddenly just takes to the throne, he just declares himself king, his position on the throne is weak. It's at risk. It's not good. Warwick needs to ensure that if he's going to do this properly, it needs to be done properly. So he says he needs to call a parliament. Back in that period of time, parliament needs to witness the new monarch like make it legit it's not just a simple case of initially killing edward but at the end warwick does seem to get a bit more extreme because he's left with very little choice by the end of things last week it was all edward making bad decisions this week warwick is slowly having it all undone in front of him once George is officially crowned king, that is when he would have killed Edward. He wouldn't have needed Edward or Elizabeth anymore. Elizabeth is currently on the run. We don't know her whereabouts. It is the week of Warwick slipping up. Warwick's first slip up is letting Edward, and this is going to be Edward Lancaster because there's now two Edwards on here. We have King Edward and we have a Edward of Lancaster before things get too confusing. I tell you guys a lot, if there is a slip up, it's simply because there's a lot of similar names. There's a lot of Edwards, there's a lot of Richards. Let's just say the naming pool wasn't very wide. I'm going to try and make sure that we understand who I'm talking about. Warwick slips up and Edward of Lancaster overhears the true plan. Remember last week, Warwick made the deal with Margaret of Lancaster that he was going to go back and Edward was going to be the ruling monarch. Of course, she was completely unaware that Warwick is trying to put George on the throne and have George married to Isabel. That was his initial plan. Warwick slip up here puts the alliance right at risk and also it runs the possibility of upsetting France and that's one thing you don't want to do. France at the moment is united, it's got a king, it's stable. If you upset France and your country is currently warring over who's going to be a monarch, you're not in a good place and you risk France taking over the country. We do get a nice look at the ends of the period where it really just was they offered you a space to sleep and nothing more, nothing like the hotels of today. Although I mean, some hotels in London, they're pretty seedy, so they're pretty much like this. It is a bit of a callback to those, but this is the norm. You basically pay maybe a penny or so and you would get a place in the bed just to sleep. We end up with the first of our unexpected twists this week where we have the alliance between Edward of Lancaster and Richard. The one thing I just couldn't shake last week and I am putting it down as a plot hole, Richard doesn't recognise Edward, despite the fact Richard definitely recognised Edward when they crossed paths earlier in the anime. It's really weird that Richard isn't recalling who Edward is because if Richard knew Edward was a Lancaster, there's no way they would have paired up with them. Almost so close right here to having a united rose. Now, if you are savvy on what happens at the end of the War of the Roses, the roses come together, we have them marrying into each other, we have the white and red rose, which is now officially the rose that is used. We are so close to having it right here because we've got Edward of the white and Richard of the red. 
very, very close, but we're still going to have to wait a few years before that actually happens. The plan is to infiltrate Warwick and save Edward. Richard needs to get in. The plan to do this is actually going to use the cause of all the trauma to Richard as a strength. It's actually quite an empowering sequence because Richard uses the one thing that traumatised them, the one thing that was always a issue, always weighing so heavily as a burden. They use it as a strength to get close to their brother. They're able to get close to Edward and actually get Edward out. We do see this week with Edward of Lancaster the use of the her pronoun over and over because Edward sees Richard as a woman. She is a woman. She's a virgin. She hasn't got anything going on. Most of this plan is happening because Edward is giving into his feelings. He feels for Richard. We know that Richard does not associate with the pronoun of her. All of the advances we see this week from Edward actually end up repulsing Richard because all the things that Edward tries to do is bearing in mind that this person is a female, therefore what would a female want? What would you want? These are all pretty. They're all things that do not appeal to Richard. The only thing that does end up appealing to Richard is food and food is a weak spot to most people because food is vital. You need food. Food serves a purpose and that's the one moment where we actually see Richard cave and go, okay, I'm interested in this. We get the interesting conversation of wishing for something sinful. Both of our characters are on different pages, but it works nicely. They're having a conversation with each other unknowingly on different pages, but it actually comes together as something quite coherent. The idea of wanting something that is bad. Edward wants the crown on his head, and that, again, would be treason for even thinking about it, because, well, there's currently a king. You wanting the crown means you're going to dispose of the king and get it illegally. You're going to get it in a bad way. And, of course, at this point, Richard not understanding who Edward is, Richard is talking to a person, just even a low class, maybe a duke or some someone who wants the crown, not even a prince at this point. Of course, Richard's own sin, Richard really has feelings towards Henry, feelings that are felt is nothing more than a sinful wish. So both characters coming together to indirectly talk to one another on the same page, but also not on the same page. They're both thinking about different things. Warwick's plan hits a second hurdle. He needs to call a parliament, but no lord is able to abandon their places to go to hold a parliament. Land is currently in turmoil. People are torn because of the monarch issue. There's people supporting George, people supporting Edward, people who probably support Lancaster still up, up in certain places. Some of the places would still want a Lancaster rule. It's such a mess that nobody can even get there to hold a parliament. Thus, he can't legitimately crown George. He can't put the crown on his head. It doesn't matter. George proclaiming himself as king, it's nothing more than just empty words right now. It's not actually legitimate. With Edward now escaping, Roark's plan is sadly thrown completely out of the window. Because our king is still alive, things are getting worse for Roark. And now, with the escape plan succeeding, we now see Warwick now having to play more extreme cards, having to take more extreme actions. So this is now our shifting point. So right now we have Richard, Catsby and Edward. Those guys are heading away, probably going to try and find a stronghold somewhere to get their army together. George is now nothing more than a traitor. He's also being abandoned by Warwick. Edward, who was currently paired up with Richard, now going their own separate ways because Edward needs to now reenact the next part of the plan with them in a really good position. This is where our characters are currently on the chessboard. Right now, Warwick is in a very bad position. Now George is a traitor. His brother knows that he is involved in the coup to get him off the throne. And now Warwick is about to abandon him. The person at the moment who is probably in the worst place you could possibly be goes to George because he's on neither side now. He's slap bang in the middle. He was disposable. Duke Buckingham reappearing this week to meet the escape party, Edward and Richard. Bearing in mind that Duke Buckingham wants to put Richard on a throne. Duke Buckingham completely supports having Richard as the monarch. Right now, the safest bet was to aid in the escape plan because that allows you to plot for another day. You may be wondering if this plot sounds a little bit familiar to Game of Thrones. Correct. The Game of Thrones is based loosely off the War of the Roses. A lot of the themes are the same. For me, Duke Buckingham jumping aside now, jumping and trying to plan and trying to put thoughts into our mind. He strikes me as more like a little finger. He might could be little finger scheming, but I think Warwick is supposed to be little finger because he's the one scheming in the backgrounds. This shot is really, really cool. I love the sword and I love the fact that you've got Buckingham and you've got Richard's face right there. I have a feeling well, at some point they're going to be together. But right now, Duke of Buckingham is playing a very dangerous game because Richard doesn't take kindly to the suggestion that they should rule. And right now, that is treason. 
Him suggesting any of this is just treason. Warwick by this point must be sweating completely. George simply yelling, I am the king is just fruitless. He's peeing in the wind. He's peeing into the fire. It's just going to go bad for you. Things get even worse when Edward confronts Warwick that he basically knows absolutely everything. Edward is a little bit angry the fact that he was trying to undercut him and trying to get George on the throne. At this point, Warwick knows that it's a do or die. If he continues his plan to go along with George, he knows that it's going to end bad. It's not going to end well. That also means he's going to have France and the Lancasters, who are a lot more powerful than him, who hasn't really got an army to use at this point. He knows it's going to end bad. He has to make an extreme decision. His decision now is to pair up with Lancasters and support the Lancaster rule. Warwick's life is on the line. Warwick now has a do or die situation. If he doesn't make a decision right now, it's going to go bad. Warwick is now acting, bearing in mind that his head's on the line. If he doesn't make the correct choice, he's going to die. King Edward is not a happy bunny. He is now motivated by the idea of revenge. When we see George refuse to kill Edward, that is when Warwick decides that he needs to take a more radical measure. It's time to jump. Warwick's life is now on the line and George now gets abandoned. This is very bad for poor George because he has nobody on his side and he's just a traitor. The best bet right now for Warwick is to side with Edward of Lancaster because there's an army, there's also France behind them. And this is going to be the more secure way of at least getting what he wants because Edward is going to be married to Anne, family on the throne. Anne is probably not the one he wanted on the throne because I think Isabel is a bit more forward. She's the one who wants to be queen. She really wants to do anything to get that her hands on the role. Anne isn't so much playing ball. Poor George, by this point, he really has no other option than maybe he can go back to France and live his life out in France until things work out. Anne is married to Edward. This bit here, guys, is not canon. Anne is actually the wife of Richard. The anime now is starting to pull away, take some artistic licenses here. Anne is basically going to marry the man who loves the same person she does it's like a triangle without a side because both of these characters Anne and Edward both love Richard turning point George is now abandoned Isabel isn't going to get her wish to become queen and is humiliated George might at the end of the day he might get himself a title of duke or something so she might at most be a lady of the lands but she's never going to be queen that's it George is abandoned for his support he's maybe going to get a nod a participation award at most you're wondering why henry is now crowned king when you've just got edward married to anne as we saw earlier right at the start things have to be done in the correct manner to have edward as the king we need henry on the throne to abdicate and crown his son once again henry is dragged into the fray he's back on the throne dragged and he's forced to wear a crown that he really doesn't want we know henry wants a quiet life he's back into the bloodshed once again but maybe not for long because we know that henry has to abdicate to allow edward to become the monarch which is probably going to happen next episode a very interesting episode this is an episode where things shift quite a bit we now have warwick is officially a lancaster that he's officially on that side with the marriage of edward and anne so he is the father of the queen he's going to have that it's going to work out but he now just needs to have those guys toke over the throne what we've now got is king henry who was the original king and we've got king edward and king edward claimed himself the king he proclaimed himself there's two monarchs now who have to duke it out and both of them have a legitimate claim to the throne. They're going to get Henry to take over the throne or they're going to have to get him to take over the official throne of England and then he's going to abdicate. He's going to set it all up so his son will then just become the monarch. George is slap bang in the middle. I think they're in France when they get married. So George is currently in France with Warwick. We've got Richard, Edward and Catsby together with the Duke of Buckingham. I guess we're going to have to try and consolidate their position. We've got Elizabeth currently on the run. Maybe her child will be a boy. Maybe it will be a girl. We don't know just yet. So we're gearing up to have a face off. I hope you guys are looking after yourselves and I hope you do take care of yourselves and are having a good weekend. If you are in the UK, stay safe. The storm is very, very bad out there. It hasn't been a fun few days of driving and the rain hasn't stopped. I hope you guys are looking after yourselves. I will see you guys next week. Have a good day, guys. Bye bye.